uh, the Honourable Member for Western Arctic. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to speak on this bill, uh, this bill which uh, affects my life, the life of my children and the life of my grandchildren, the lives of all uh, my friends and relatives that live in the Northwest Territories. Uh, it, it is part of our life. This bill is part of our life. And we are the only ones that really are affected by the bill. This bill is for us. Our point of view is very important. I want to thank our, the, the Leader of the Official Opposition for standing up and speaking to this bill at this critical moment in, uh, in uh, as, as all have said in the House here, this critical moment in constitutional development for Canada. So I, I'm very pleased that he's taken the time to do that. Devolution is well supported in the Northwest Territories. We don't have to argue about that. We don't have to work very hard on that section of the bill. We did get one or two amendments in there that that help a little bit uh, uh, and make it more equitable throughout the three territories, this particular bill. The contentious part is the changes to the Mackenzie Valley Resource Management Act. And there's a clear consensus that this, the one thing that is not appropriate is the change to the, from uh, the regional boards to a super board. It is inappropriate, counterproductive, divisive, and destabilizing. All the things that we don't want to have happen in the Northwest Territories. These are things that go much beyond the addition of a few extra people sitting on boards making the future of the Northwest Territories. This has massive consequences to all. Our amendment today to restore the regional boards this is a matter that will strengthen C-15, that will strengthen devolution, that will ensure stability. It, it truly is representative of the wishes of the people of the Northwest Territories. I, I urge the government to support this amendment. This amendment can only help to create a bill that will heap praise on your shoulders. That if, by supporting this amendment you will show your humanity and your desire to do the right thing. I want to review how we got here as pre presented in testimony. The first step in that was the McCrank report. Now when Mr. McCrank stood in front of the committee, he admitted that the idea of a super board was his idea. There was no one in the Northwest Territories that suggested that to him. That idea came from him, from an Alberta person who ran the Alberta Energy Utility Board. Of course he thought that the structure should be similar to Alberta, but that's not what we have set out to do in the Northwest Territories. We have set out to have regional governments, Aboriginal governments, whether they're Inuvialuit, who are keeping their regional boards, by the way, or the Satu, the, the uh, Tlicho, and the Gwich'in, who have made agreements. Now, my colleague across talks about there was contemplation within the land claims of a, of a single board. Contemplation does not mean agreement. Contemplation does not mean that you can go ahead without full negotiation to change a land claim because you contemplate something within an agreement. When, when the, uh, after the McCrank report, the government hired um, Mr. John Pollard to be their chief federal negotiator. It's interesting that the testimony from the Tlicho uh, indicated that in 2011 they gave the government a protocol framework for negotiating changes to the Mackenzie Valley Resource Management Act. They were willing to work with the government to do the right thing here, to make changes, to make the system more efficient. They set out a protocol. That protocol was shelved. Mr. Pollard in testimony admitted that with just taken as information, nothing was done with it. So what we had was a situation where governments held meetings. Mr. Pollard held many meetings. But they weren't in any uh, agreed upon framework with the two elements of the land claims, the First Nations who have treaty rights and treaty responsibilities to their citizens, and the Government of Canada representing the Crown, 
There was no agreement on how you would negotiate changes to these land claims. That is where this government falls flat on its face. So departmental officials then presented bills to the, in, in the fall of this year to the First Nations. They presented a separate bill for devolution, a separate bill for the changes to the Mackenzie Valley Resource Management Act. They were never taken together. And both legal counsels for the Tlicho said, in the October session, I asked the federal, this is Bertha Rebesca Zo, legal counsel for the Tlicho government. In that October session, I asked the federal officials who were there doing the presentations whether those bills would be bundled as an omnibus bill, and we were never given a response. Mr. Darren Lees, legal counsel for the Satu, said, never once were the federal devolution negotiators to, able to provide any substance or details about the Mackenzie Valley legislation in the proposed amendments. This is the state of the consultation that was taking place on this Act C-15. So quite clearly, the process on devolution that's been going on for 20 years, the problem we had with devolution was getting First Nations governments on side. Premier McLeod accomplished that for devolution. We've heard the testimony from Premier McLeod. He didn't involve discussions about the, uh, the Mackenzie Valley Resource Management Act with the First Nations. He said that wasn't mar their business. So, once again, that regulation, those regulation issues were designed to be kept separate. Today, we put forward an amendment to bring peace to this issue. Regional boards are working fine today. And I want to quote Mr. Tom Hoffer, Executive Director, NWT and Nunavut Chamber of Mines. We recognize that the Aboriginal community is validly concerned by the loss of the existing regional panels. You should know that a number of industry members, especially those that have developed close working relationships with the regional boards, have likewise expressed concerns and reservations. Does that sound like industries offside on the regional boards? No, it doesn't. How does this uncertainty serve anyone's purposes? We're likely to be caught up in litigation. We're likely to have a new government in a year and a half. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to fix these mistakes that have been made here. We're going to have to fix them. Because the conservative attitude of ignoring the wishes of the people will eventually catch up to them. And they will be thrown out of office. So, to the conservatives, do your job. Listen to people. Hear what the people have to say. Hear what the people in the Northwest Territories have to say about the laws that affect us only. The laws that are how we want to develop. Listen to us. Hear us. That, perhaps, if you follow that lesson with us, you may follow that with others and you may find that your political careers can be extended. You know, the North is a great adventure. I've been part of it my whole life. And we will, in the end, do the right thing. We will, in the end, cause, create a territory with a unique and powerful system of government Conservatives, join us in doing that. This is a simple amendment that, can, that doesn't change much at all, but represents so much to us. Thank you very much.